they get out loud, I want you to bring the whole family together. And I want to kind of introduce the topic in the show by letting you know a little small bit of the history. There's a friend of mine named Aretha Franklin. I'm sure you've heard of her. She's a singer. Sometimes people, when they get very excited, call her the Queen of Soul. And one time she recorded a song entitled You and that's what I want to use as a focal point for thinking out loud. Because now we're at a critical juncture in the history of America. We're at an election process. And politicians are trying to get your vote. Historically, promises are made during the campaign. Probably less than 10% are kept. And that is because the lobbyist groups and the special interest groups in America have figured out that it is good to let politicians promise. But it won't affect the business interests or the lobbyist interests because Washington has a mechanism for attracting, suffocating, and strangling the ability to fulfill the promises. How's that done? That's why I listened to Reefer. She said, you better think. Think what they are doing to us. Millions of dollars historically were donated by business interests to politicians, especially in the United States Congress and the Senate. And for that money, they tell the politicians that you can do whatever you want when it's time to propose legislation and pass legislation unless you get a call from us. And I thought that's what Hillary was talking about one time, when she said the call came in the middle of the night and kids were sleeping, and who would you want to be in the White House? I'll tell you one thing, we don't want anyone in the White House who is controlled by the lobbyist groups, because that call may be telling the president, this is what we want you to do, this is how we want you to do it, and we've already influenced Congress, they're just waiting for your speech, and they will pass the legislation. People have maybe sincere intentions when they decide to run for office, but then Washington teaches them the game. After a while, nothing is done. It becomes the burial ground. It's not enough to know the problem. It's not enough to know the stranglehold. The question is, what can we do to change and break the stranglehold on the system so that you, for the first time in years, can begin to believe politicians and presidential candidates because you will realize the street log has been removed. We want to think. That's what Aretha says. Think what they're doing to us and how to think out loud. We know that there have been several presidents who, for whatever reason, have been able to resonate with the public. Abraham Lincoln was one. He wanted to eliminate slavery. A lot of people in the United States did not want to eliminate slavery. They were making money. They're saying the slave would be room and board. We need that to add to our profits. So Abraham Lincoln was going to take a stand. But without the support of Congress, it would die. And if Abraham Lincoln did not have the ability to connect with the public and convince them to enter into a contract with him, he couldn't affect Congress. But Abraham Lincoln set forth the goals. And Abraham Lincoln was a man of hope. He said, 
if you can conceive, that's hope. And you believe, that's hope. You can achieve. That's what we need today. We need to conceive of a plan. We need to believe in the plan. We have to know what are the ingredients for implementing that plan. And based upon the hope and the strategy, we can achieve. Abraham Lincoln did that. And he used the public to put the pressure on Washington not to go against the people. In other words, Abraham Lincoln said to the people, there's only a little bit I can do. But if you, the people, will take back your power, we, the people of the United States, well, many today just don't believe that can happen. Many people, citizens throughout the United States, said, how are we going to take back the power? The people in Washington, they just lie all the time. The answer is bonding, making a contract. One of the candidates, you have to ask yourself, which one can I trust? And will they make a contract, and will they deliver the contract, and will they tell the Congress that the people have spoken? Here are the things that they want done. The Congress then passes the legislation, and you, the people, reclaim your government, and you enjoy the benefits that you are entitled to. But you have to think. You have to think about the old process and then come to the new process. So let's just assume that uh, we have agreed on that paradigm. Next question is, how do we prioritize what we want Congress to do, what we want the President to do? Well, the first thing we know if the president does not get a qualified cabinet, I don't care how sincere they are, I don't care how much experience they have, it will be a disaster. The only qualifications to be president of the United States is to be president of the United States. It's the most complex, the most elusive, the most changing, the most unpredictable position in the world, to be qualified to be president is not a matter of how many years you've been answering the telephone while your children are sleeping. Qualifications do not relate to how many years you've been in the Senate. The Senate is a processing body. They look at bills, finance, defense bills, money. That's what they do. We're not just looking at bills. We want someone who knows how to manage. Managing skills, making budgets, orchestrating, presiding over those budgets. That is a key qualification. And if you tune in, I'm going to tell you some more while we think that live. Thank you very much.